What springs to mind when you think of North Korea? Nuclear weapons, tensions with the West and their neighbours to the South, the rigid control exerted over their citizens, labour camps? Whatever it is, we're pretty sure it wouldn't be football. But that could be about to change and it's all down to one man. Cagliari's 19-year-old Han Kwang Song. A bustling, all-action, old-fashioned number nine, Han became the first North Korean to score a Serie A goal in April 2017 when he planted a header home past Joe Hart of all people. He'd joined the Sardinian club's academy two years previously and is now tied down to a contract running until 2022. Loaned out to Perugia in Serie B for the 2017-18 season, he scored a hat-trick on his debut and continued to tear it up in the Italian second tier. Recalled early, he's now featuring in the top flight once again. Make no mistake, this boy's got talent. And all the while, he's been attracting a lot of attention. Before signing his first professional contract, Liverpool tracked him earlier in his career, even name-dropping Steven Gerrard in a meeting with him. But Han had no idea who he was. More recently, Spurs were rumoured to be taking a serious look at him, but it's Juventus who keep cropping up in relation to the teenager's future. But I know what you're thinking. Hold on a minute. How does a North Korean even make it to an Italian academy in the first place? This is where things begin to get interesting. Step forward, Italian politician Antonio Dazzi, a man who claims to be a good friend of Kim Jong-un and wants to take Paolo Dybala to Pyongyang to help ease tensions with the West. Why have they done this? I mean, a lot of the players have now ended up at the USM Academy in Italy. Now, this is a fascinating place. You have a, a politician called Anthony Iolazzi, a, a former senator in, in Italy, who has uh, some connections with, with the North Korea regime and brokered a deal whereby North Korean players would come and uh, train. They've had one huge success who has played for Cagliari, who's played for Perugia, and now may, may play for Juventus. The issue is why. Why invest in football in this way? And I think there are, there are two really important reasons, I think, where they see the benefit in this. One, of course, the propaganda benefits of having a football player playing for a top team like Juventus or Real Madrid or uh, Manchester United is absolutely huge for the regime. It starts a different type of conversation. It starts a different type of um, view of, of North Korea to the rest of the world. But as you might expect, signing a player from North Korea isn't exactly comparable with any other transfer. It's inherently complicated and fraught with political implications. The government seizes as much as 90% of migrant workers' wages, which provide a crucial source of income for the country. Now, if Han signed a big deal with a major club, the money he would be getting paid and where it ended up would be of huge importance, especially with the UN Security Council looking to limit the amount of money sent back to the country. One of the things that North Korea has done is, under the current sanctions regime, hard currency is an absolute premium. So workers have been sent to work on building sites in the Middle East, in Qatar, in the UAE, in Russia. Um, and those wages are effectively, 90% by some accounts, are sent back to the regime. Now this is slightly problematic for a club like Fiorentina or Cagliari or Perugia and it's certainly going to be uh, problematic for Juventus. Yet Han isn't the only player to have found himself in this kind of position. His countryman Cho Song Hyok, a product of the same academy, was the subject of an Italian investigation while at Fiorentina. The investigation found his contract to be above board, but Laviola eventually decided that any possible legal troubles simply weren't worth the risk. With a player of Han's ability though, this might not be the case, but the potential problems would be exactly the same. Earlier this season, North Korea blocked Han from doing an interview with Italian television. By sending him to Italy in the first place, the government made an economic investment in him. That means Kim Jong-un will definitely be aware of him and almost certainly have his own ideas on just how he can benefit the country, almost certainly by helping him on his way to an elite club. Cagliari have gone on the record as saying that Han's nationality doesn't enter into their thoughts, that he's just like any other teenager and is constantly on his phone. But put simply, there's no way of knowing the exact nature of his relationship with his native land, and that's what makes any potential move so intriguing. If the player isn't in charge of his bank account and that money is going straight back into the regime under a very strict sanctions regime, then they might be contravening international sanctions, which brings a whole new level of um, bureaucratic, at least, not least, you know, you know, huge fines, probably even prison sentences for people who are involved in this kind of stuff. 
So, on the face of it, the seemingly endless web of possible problems makes a move for Han quite simply not worth it for a major club and worldwide brand. But should that really be the case? At the heart of this is a young man who simply through accident of birth has considerably more obstacles in his way if he's to make it to the very top of his profession. On a human level, that just doesn't seem right. He's one man caught up in an incredibly complicated global political situation. But that's the world we live in, and Han finds himself at the heart of a completely unique situation. Can a player from a country so at odds with the international community ever make it to the top of the sport? And what would be the consequences of one of the world's most repressive nations having a world-class footballer at a top club? For now, there are more questions than answers. But one thing's for sure, it's a fascinating story and one that won't be going away anytime soon.